Well, what are we doing today? Well, we had a couple of SSDs show up. And no, this is not the one we're using. This is going in a mate's machine. We're going to use this SSD. Now, my apprentice, who you can hear in the background, um, she's figured out what I'm doing. She has a uh, workstation machine here. This is a Dell T5400. And it's got a mechanical drive and it's bottlenecking everything. This machine I like because it's very easy to dismantle. This particular machine is a dual CPU job. I'm pretty sure they're two dual Xeons, uh, which are quad core, no hyper threading. Um, and I think they're about 2.8 gigahertz. I'll have to look it up. 2.8 or 2.4, one of the two. Um, it came with 8 gig of RAM as a refurbished machine. We've banked it out to 20 gig because the RAM sticks are about six bucks. It's got my old Radeon HD something or another uh, 5850 in there. And uh, yeah, we want to uh, fix the bottleneck with this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to whack this drive in as a secondary and we're going to stick a Chronos True Image in here and um, which I'm going to have to do on CD because for some reason the BIOS in this doesn't like booting from the particular memory sticks I've got. And uh, it also means we can close it back up which depresses this switch and the fans won't run at 100% because it doesn't think that the therm thermal solution has been compromised. Anyway, these are nice modular machines, and I used to use Dell T3500s for my workstation, so I've got a lot of compatible bits and pieces floating around. Anyway, let's get this out of the package and uh, get it in here. Now, I'm sorry about the background noise. <coughs> we'll turn off the inlet fan. I just realized I had that running. I needed some fresh air through the office because it's actually a day where it's not swelteringly hot outside. I should be out changing the clutch slave cylinder in the six wheel drive lander over printing ambulance but it's been a busy morning and i've been on the phone most of the morning so you know what f that i'm not doing it i'm glad these are not shock sensitive because they're certainly hard to get out of that package anyway um 240 gig the drive that is in this is a one terabyte mechanical drive however she's only using about 100 gig so uh we're going to install this and see how we go. All right, so um, it should be pretty well straightforward for this side of it um, because I think we've got power connection already over here somewhere. I'm not going to worry about pegging this down just yet um, because we just want to connect it up. We will put it in the drive bay properly once we've got everything else sorted. That could be difficult with these little removable drive bays, uh, but we'll come up with a solution that works. <coughs> All right. Now we need to get power and everything hooked up to it. Now, before we do too much else with this, we're gonna put the case side back on. Um, it's just simply because it holds that button down. If you don't push that button down on the case, it's uh, used as a chassis intrusion tamper switch, but it also um, tells it if the cooling system is working properly. So if you leave it out, it goes, the cooling system has been compromised and it runs all the fans flat out. You can't hear yourself think. One of the reasons why we got this it was free. Um, we ordered another one for a, a mate of mine um, for very cheap. It's refurbished and they dropped it during shipping. So they sent us another one. I had enough Dell T 3500 parts to make the original one work. So we got this one essentially for free. Okay, so welcome to the uh, hidden corner of my desk that is much messier than it should be. Um, I've got VGA to my, uh, my TV in here and we're going to use that as... Um, with a gender bender from one of the DVI ports. And we're gonna put our ugly cable away. Not a sponsor, by the way. <clears throat> I just like the cable. <clears throat> All right, let's get our uh, monitor up and running. Oh, we need a keyboard and mouse. So, uh, where are we up here? I have a wireless mouse um, receiver here, for my Logitech mouse, and I have a spare keyboard. My spare keyboard is attached to a Raspberry Pi 4 file server, so I'm in the middle of fixing that up. Let's get our keyboard out of the way and plug you in, which is right here. Okay, now I think we're almost right to fire it up. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to select the blue auxiliary and we're going to switch the TV over to PC input. Alright, so this is where a few things happen fairly quickly. 
So we're going to go over to PC. And before we do much with that, we need to start this up and we need to open this drive. Because the, P the TV will turn itself off if there's no detected video signal for about 10 seconds. And I can't adjust that time. We've also got to get that in before the thing finishes booting so that it can boot from CD. Now, if I recall correctly, I have set it to boot from CD primarily, yes, and it started the Acronis bootloader. So, we're good there. Let's change our camera angles. Alright, so the Acronis bootloader has didn't get a key signal, so it's booted straight into Windows. We'll have to restart again. Right, now I ignored this for too long and it went into start Windows. So we want to go true image and this is a 64-bit machine, so we want Acronis true image. We'll let that start up and we'll be back. Alrighty now, I'm holding the camera with one hand and I'm using a keyboard with the other. And uh, this has mouse control. So we want to go tools and utilities. We want to go clone disk, automatic, yep. And uh, it's going to check for the drive free space. So out of the one terabyte we're using, we're using bugger all. So we're going to go along this bit. We're going to skip that. And it's correctly identified our source disk. I haven't bothered to uh, format the destination disk. It'll do all that anyway. If I format it, it's just going to clone across the current partition formatting anyway. So we don't care. This bit's going to take a while while it analyzes that disk. We'll be back when it's done with that bit. All right, again, sorry for the shaky footage. I've got motion stabilization on. Right, we've finished indexing this disk. Now we are going to take disk two as our target disk. And uh, right, we're gonna select that. It's 223 gig. We're going to uh, let it do some thinking. And uh, yeah, it's gonna trim some things off and keep the recovery partition intact. And uh, yeah, so it should trim all that down. We've got loads of free space, so I think we're pretty good. Let's let it do its thing. We're going to be here for a little while, although presumably much faster. Historically, when I do this, reading from a mechanical disk is pretty quick, and writing to the SSD is way quicker. So this shouldn't take too long. We'll be back. All right, so uh, I looked down for a couple of minutes, looked back up, and it says it's got six minutes left. That's pretty good. This normally takes like half an hour, so uh, we're doing pretty well. Okay, so apparently it's done. Now, uh, Windows 10 was registered until I originally did the upgrade and I just swapped the disks over and it lost the registration. Somehow, when you clone these, they do keep the registration. Um, I actually managed to get a Windows XP running on a... Mo or no, yes, Windows XP running on modern hardware using this too. It does something crazy. I'm not sure how they do it, but it's awesome. Anyway, this Windows 10 won't be registered anyway when we do this, but... Let's go and swap these discs over. Alrighty, turn back on our uh, indicator light so I can see what I'm doing. Now we will um, shut this machine down after I drop the keyboard on the floor. So, where is a mouse? We want to shut down everything. We're going to close that window which should cause it to shut down. Okay, before it completely turns off we're going to spit this disc out. Come on, you can do it. Real quick, I don't want to have to use the paperclip method. Spit the disc out. Come on, yes, just in time. Okay, now turn you off because we want to disconnect the other drive. Swing this round and open it up. Okay, well, we're going the wrong way. Wrong way, wrong way, upside down, upside down. If any of you remember Mr. Squiggle, you remember that phrase. Anyway, let's. um. Pull these out, fold our drive bracket down, and we will unplug with a little blue tab, and that, and drop this drive out, and we'll pop it out of the bracket and put the bracket back in, and then we're going to swap this drive back over to the primary IDE slot, because that's the one it likes to boot from. Get it around the right way. This is a little warm, but then again, we've just given it a bit of a hiding. Uh, we've just written about 100 gig of stuff to it, so wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't slightly warm. Um, now we'll find a way to improvise this case. Um, 
I may, being as this is shock resistant, just double side tape it down. This thing is so heavy, it's not going to bounce around. Um, look, for the time being, uh, we'll find a three and a half inch to two and a half inch bay adapter at some point in the future. We just want to stop this slapping around too much. I'm just going to tuck it in here for now. I know it's a bit hodgepodge, but uh, we'll get the proper adapter in. I probably should have prepared that ahead of time. Anyway, let's um, whack this in here and we'll see what our boot time's like. I'm going to guess it's going to be quicker. Um, this one has about a one minute boot time with a mechanical drive. There we go. All right, them clips are engaged. All right, let's get our boot time sorted. All right, we're going to turn our on button here at the one second mark. Now, this monitor will turn on when it detects a signal from this. So we're gonna let it run for a minute. Okay, so we had a bit of a hang up before, um, at about 30 second mark, just after I stopped recording. So now we're at about a 15 second boot now. So much quicker. But we're gonna do some tests. So uh, let's, uh, and I'm a little bit blue shifted here because the contacts in this VGA splitter are a little bit dirty, so if we run the contacts up and down again, that should clean them up. All right, let's log in. All right, now we have login time. Should be nice and quick. What has she done to this? Okay, she's been installing stuff. Well, um, yep. We'll do some tests and see what happens. All right, so um, really in this case, the metric is not so much um, really disk access. Oh, we had a problem. This has been happening since I filled the RAM slots up, so maybe we've got a crook RAM slot. I'm going to reboot and check the reliability manager and find out what was going on. All right, we're in the reliability manager now. Let's see what's going on here. Is that as far as we can go? So what happened today? Let's full screen this and have a look. So, Windows shutdown expected that we kind of gathered that. Windows is not properly shut down, that's all good. That's stuff we would have known. Logitech, we know that's going on, so... Oh... This looks like hardware failure to me. Um, the most recent of which was... What are we looking at? That one. You might hear my apprentice complaining in the background. The deal was I'd upgrade things if she cleaned her room. She's not dealing very well with that end of the bargain. Um, or if, now, I'm going to have to look all this up. But yeah, this is definitely a hardware failure. But, um, I don't know what that parameter is about. I'll bet you somebody more expert than me is going to have picked that up in here. Um, but yeah, certainly could have been a RAM issue. Anyway, we will look into that more often. Let's try something we know loads at an average speed, typically. Well, Peggle is almost instant. That's good. That was normally a 30 second load. We're doing well. This is my metric because this is what matters to the user of the computer. All right, so we're gonna quit this. It's actually quite snappy now. We're moving along pretty well. Minecraft is the one that takes about three minutes to load. Um, see how we go. This is not connected to the net at this point, but we're gonna see. So our launch is pretty good. Let's go play offline. See how we go here. All right. She doesn't play on servers or shared games, so that username you've seen up there is probably not much valuable to you, if I've forgotten to blur it out. So we're still taking a bit of time to load here. Um, let's have a look. Let's see if I can one hand to do a control alt delete here. And um, we're gonna go task manager and see. Traditionally, when I check the performance on this, the disk is going flat chat. Now we've got 100% CPU and barely any disk chat. So I've shifted the load over to the CPUs, of which there are two. And that is 100% quicker than it used to be. Um, we would still be waiting probably another two minutes, two or three minutes at this point. Let's see how we go in terms of loading her world. Uh, yep, because she's using the daily builds, so uh, she's usually always at a different version. 
to see how this goes for a minute. This world is a particularly large one with large volumes of stuff. So, it's going to go for a bit. That is going to take a little while, but no slower than it was before. Let's see what our monitor's doing here. Yep, yeah, CPU is going flat chat. I'm not sure why, but I don't get GPU performance in this. Maybe I need to upgrade the drivers for that uh, Radeon HD 5950. Anyway, um, or 5850, I'll look back in the case. It's an old one anyway. Let's uh, shrink you down. Oh, we're joining the world. We loaded it. Okay. So, wow. What has she set her render distance to? Okay, she's been playing with the settings again. Let's have a look in here. Let's go settings. Options, video settings. My, my hand is getting sore here. Give me a moment. All right, now I've got a better position. Let's have a look here. Graphics are fast. Render distance is 16 chunks. We'll knock that back just a bit. Um, yeah, try that. This is primarily graphic stuff. Simulation distance, 12 chunks. Well, what do we do? We just lost our picture. Uh, let's flick our switch again. Get this up. All right, so we've got here chunk builder semi-blocking. I think that's what we decided on. There's a lot of options in here that never used to be in here when I first got started, so I'm not as familiar with some of them. V-Sync off, brightness is bright, full screen off, minimap levels 2, distortion off, FOV at 50%, entity distance at 100%, clouds at fast, particles decreased, could be just the things are still loading. So we're at 640 by 480 at 24 bit, that is, I think we're... Yeah, okay, yeah. So let's just leave it back down at 640. Uh, full screen res. So 1280 by 1024 is native for this. Uh, the monitor that I'll be running. It's probably 640 by 480 because it's detected VGA. Alright. Oh yeah, now that's loaded, we're moving alright. We're not too bad. Either way, loading into Minecraft is considerably faster. So, and that's like pretty much that. And Roblox is where she's going to live, so... Yeah, I'm not going to run around in Minecraft and muck around too much because we'll start looking at other aspects of the hardware and we're just in here for the hard drive. So, um, now, how do I do this one-handed? Let's get out of Minecraft. Oh, we've got to do an Alt-Tab here. Where's Tab? Alt-Tab. Alright. So, yeah, CPU is doing its thing. Disk is basically doing nothing. Previously, that would have been a flat block of 100%. So, yeah, we're doing pretty well. Um... Memory 4.7 gig of 20. You know, I'd love to max it out, but these were really cheap RAM sticks, like six bucks uh, for a two gig stick, and they had a couple of four gigs in there already. So, um, you know, like 20 bucks to max the thing out wasn't bad. And we've got a memory stick in every slot, so my apprentice is still protesting in the background, so she's probably going to wait a little bit for this. Anyway, um, pretty much what's the other thing? This is usually a pretty good test of disk access because it loads into RAM almost instantly with an SSD. Yeah, <laughs> Chuzzle's a pretty awesome game, I love it. I actually wrote some music a while ago um, using the sound effects from Chuzzle's. I'll dig that up one day. I have about a hundred tracks to my name and a handful of them registered with APRA. But for now, I think we're done. We're going to shut this guy down. And shutdown is also a bit of an idea of how quick the disk access is. Very quick. All right, we're done. Hope it was an interesting video. Nothing terribly complicated, but it's channel filler till I can get out and do some more interesting stuff. See you later, hope you had fun. And yeah, welcome to my messy room. Just as a bit of a bonus on the end of this, I've pulled this drive out and I was looking on drive compare websites to try and find the difference in speeds with these to create some sort of a metric. Now, while this guy does say six gig a second, that's only the standard of the SATA that that drive board can do. Um, the only bit of information I've been able to find out about this, and this probably came out of a server drive at some point that I've got refurbished, um, but this is a shingled magnetic recording drive, an SMR drive. That's quite a slow way to actually access stuff. Um, and uh, as a result, they're really designed only for storage drives. So yeah, and were made in China too, so I'm skeptical on that too. But anyway... That's another political discussion for another time. Um, 
this is the one we put in here is an SA400 S37 and it's a 240 gig drive let's take a quick look at the numbers on that so we had a uh, little bit of a glitch in filming there and uh, I didn't record the last bit here but these are rated for about 500 megabytes a second I was way off I've been used to looking at X570 NVMe SSDs which are even faster again that's probably not the fastest uh, SSD in existence, but it didn't matter. It was about 30 bucks worth. Certainly a great way of solving the bottleneck on a cheap computer. Now, SMR drives like this are still really good for long-term storage. If you're living off old recycled computer bits like I did for about 20 years, it's certainly a good choice to put one of these guys as a secondary drive for your storage. They're quite reliable, do the job. But uh, for the main side, get even the cheapest SSD you can is still faster than these. So even a 30 buck knockoff brand one from China will still suit you. Um, I can't vouch for the reliability of those, but if you keep important data duplicated or backed up on your second drive, you should be pretty good. For instance, when I'm running my uh, mail server, I have all my mail files from Outlook stored on a secondary drive or on a server. They don't need high speed access, but they're important data that I need to store in a secure place. So when it's all stored over on a Linux server that requires a password, that's a little bit more secure than having everything in one place on one frangible disk. So I'll see you later. I hope you had fun. And uh, yeah, take the hint with the thumbs. Thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, whatever. Let's go on and uh, move on to more interesting stuff. Hope you had fun. See you later.